guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, all about my faith, God of Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And today's video, as the title says below, is going to be a, another reading vlog. And I am currently making this reading vlog while making another reading vlog. So you might see me in the same outfit for both reading vlogs. So just understand I'm reading two books at the same time, okay? But um, this is going to be for Star of Persia by Miss Jo Eileen Smith. This book came out yesterday, Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020, of course. Um, today is March 4th, Wednesday. And I am splitting this into a three-day vlog, so it will take three days of reading. And I'm super, super excited to dive into this. I must say I love this cover. I was a part of the cover reveal team for this book, um, which we did this cover reveal immediately after we had the launch for... Um, uh, the Heart of a King, which I did read The Heart of a King. If you haven't seen that video, just click the eye on the screen for that. But that was basically the story of King Solomon as well as his four, I think it was four of his wives, four or five of his wives. I enjoyed it. I gave it a four-star rating. thought it was awesome. But um, I have high hopes. I'm hoping this is a 4.5 or five-star rating because I gave The Heart of a King four stars. I really have high hopes. This is basically the story of Esther. Um, we have studied Esther here on DOI. And if you guys are not familiar with who Esther is, Esther was basically an orphan. She lived with her cousin, I believe. It was her cousin named Mordecai. Um, and then there was a situation at the palace with King Ahasuerus. Keep in mind, King Ahasuerus is King Xerxes. I believe Xerxes is his Persian name and Ahasuerus is his Hebrew name or something like that along those lines. I'll exactly put on the screen which name is which, but Ahasuerus and Xerxes are the same person. But um, there was a situation with King Ahasuerus. King Xerxes, King Ahasuerus, and his wife, Queen Vashti, where she basically was banished and he had to find a new wife. So, therefore, they put out this edict to find all the beautiful young virgin girls, brought them to the palace. There were basically hundreds of girls, and Esther was the one who won um, his affection, and she became queen. And in the midst of becoming queen of um, Persia and being a Hebrew, Keep in mind, the king didn't know she was Hebrew because Mordecai had told her not to tell anyone that she was Hebrew. So she was a queen. She was Hebrew, but no one knew she was Hebrew. She found out that um, someone was trying to basically do a mass genocide on all the Hebrews and the Jews. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's a lot. So if you want to know like the basics, I would definitely suggest you read Esther. Um, Esther, if I'm not mistaken, is about 10 chapters. Um, it's not long. It's very amazing. Um, and Esther is well known for her comment in which she said um if she dies she'll die basically she was going to go to the king without being called to the king and um if you went to the king without being called and he did not point his scepter at you you were basically killed didn't matter who you were so um you know if she dies she she would die for her people and i thought that was phenomenal she's also well known for calling all of her um you know fellow jews to fast with her for three days as she prepared to speak to um the king so i hope that made sense but we have this beauty. I love this cover so much. Isn't she gorgeous? I'm a set, a, obsessed with like this background here. It's gorgeous. And I love the back of this book. So expect a book look makeup tutorial coming. But let me read the back of this book to you guys. So on the back it says, Love, duty, fair, courage. In the court of the king, which will prevail? In an effort to complete a war his father had planned to win, King Xerxes, or King Ahasuerus as the Bible calls him, calls every governor, satrap, I think that's how you say that, Sa satrap, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but an official in his vast kingdom to his palace in Susa to strategize the feast. When they finally leave, he decides on one more week of frivolity, which ends in the banishment of his favorite wife, who was Queen Vashti. Um, I think it was Vashti or Vashti, can't remember, <laughs> but um, something he never intended to do. But he discovers Esther, sorry, but when he discovers Esther, Xerxes is sure he has a second chance at happiness. In her wildest dreams, Esther could never have imagined that she would end up as Queen of Persia. Yet she knows better than to, com to become complacent. Another of Xerxes' wives is vying for position, and his closest advisor, who I his his closest advisor is Haman. We know about Haman. I can't stand him. But um, another of Xerxes' wives is vying for position, and his closest advisor has a deep and dangerous grudge against Esther's adoptive father. Caught in the middle of palace politics, Esther will find herself in an impossible position, risk her life, or consign her people to annihilation. So, I'm super excited. I've only read one Esther 
um, sort of retelling our biblical picture, and that was Esther by Angela Hunt. I gave that book four stars, so that's why I'm also hoping that this is a 4.5, five star rating, because I'm looking for an Esther novel that I can truly enjoy. I have my favorite novel for um, Priscilla and Aquila. I have my favorite novel for Lydia. I have my favorite novel for Ruth and Rahab. Like, I have my favorites for a specific woman in the Bible, so I'm hoping this could be my new favorite for Esther. There are thousands of other Esther novels I want to read, but super excited. So, um, I tried to find the audiobook for this, and I can't. So, let me just check one more time to see if they have the audiobook, but I don't think they do. I'm pretty sure the audiobook is on Scribd, but I don't, I don't want to pay for Scribd. I mean, not Scribd. Um, I'm pretty sure the audiobook is on Audible, but I, I just don't want to pay for um, Audible. I'm just oh they got it my god they have the auto they have the audiobook on script they didn't have it yesterday but they have it now so I am literally going to download this right now to listen to um I have a total of like 11 books now I had 10 but now I have 11 um and script is an awesome this is not a sponsored like video at all I'm just going to share with you guys about script so basically um script is like audible but it is cheaper than audible <laughs> audible is $15 a month um, for one credit, whereas Scribd is ten dollars a month if you do the monthly route. Um, it's ten about nine and nine and some tax, so about ten and some change. Um, but you can download as many books as you want to listen to, which I love. Like I said, I currently have eleven books downloaded on my phone, including the one I'm downloading now. So I have a lot of um, audiobooks, and I'm only paying ten dollars a month now. As of right now, I signed up about a month and a half ago. Um, so I basically got two months free um to listen to so i won't be paying for the um script until april and i don't think ten dollars a month is bad anyway um so if you are interested in audiobooks and are looking for something cheaper than audible that gives you a lot more bang for your buck i would suggest script um you can look at the link down below sign up you'll get two months free and then i'll get a month free so i'm not getting paid for this at all um the only compensation that i get is that i get an additional free month i highly suggest script um just to show you guys, I have a total of 51 titles, right? The titles that I have downloaded on my phone right now are 11 because I'm downloading this. I'm currently listening to The Priest. I will be listening to um, Suffering is Never for Nothing as well as Claim Your Crown shortly. And now I have Star Persia. There is also The Pharaoh's Daughter on here. And they have Daughter of Rome. So, like, I have a bunch of novels, Pharaoh's Daughter. So, I'll be listening to all of these this month. Um, so I highly definitely suggest you guys check out Scribd if you want more information. The sign up link is down below as well as my um, link for you guys to get two free months. But um, I definitely would suggest it. I've had Scribd previously um, prior to this year. I think maybe a year or two years ago. And I enjoyed it. But then I stopped using it because I wasn't a fan of audiobooks. But I find that I love listening to audiobooks as I read. I do read faster than audiobooks though. <laughs> Um, their speed goes up to three times speed, which is the same speed that the app that I use on my phone goes up to. And I read typically faster than the audiobook, but, um, it definitely helps me to get into the mindset and the voice a little better as I'm reading it and gives me so much more of an experience, which I find that, like I said, reading the book, the physical book or the ebook, as well as listening to the audiobook just really pulls me into the story. Um, so yes, I'm super excited because I was literally trying to find this last week, not last week, yesterday, and it wasn't there, but it's there now, so <laughs> I'm going to listen to it now. Recording books and like I said, it goes up to three times speed. Um, it starts at, you can slow it down to 0. 0.8. Yeah, 0. 0.8. The max is three times. I always start off at two times speed until I get used to the person's voice, and then I slowly progress to 2.5 and then three point speed. Again, I do read faster than that, but... I'm super, super excited to dive into this. I, like I said, I have high hopes. So today I am going to be reading up into chapter 14. So um, I'm reading 116 pages today. I must say that I love these headers. Ooh, it's broken down into parts. Okay, so let's take this out. I love the detailing. I'm a sucker for cute detailing in books and fonts. <laughs> I wish this had a map. It does not have a map. I wish it did. But, um, yeah, so here's a bookmark that I'm going to be using. This bookmark I got from the Delilah box for February. I think it was the February box. Um, and this was a handmade bookmark. It did not come laminated. I did laminate mine twice. Um, obviously there is going to be some slight issue. Oh, no, there's no issues. It actually closed all the way. 
great. Um, there was slight issues the first time, obviously, because this is like raised, but it just says love with a heart and these strings attached. So we have that. And then two more items I'm going to be using as I read. I'm going to be utilizing this Bible Atlas um, from John A. Beck. And this literally is just like maps throughout the book. Um, just maps and information about the different locations, as well as my baby, um, the Rose book of Bible charts, maps, and timelines. I adore this book so much, and I'm really debating if I honestly want to buy volumes two and three. Um, but this has become my love, specifically because there are timelines, there's in-depth information. Um, I'm going to be using this for a Bible, a few Bible studies I have in mind. But what I love is that there are then and now maps. So here's the Holy Lands then and the Holy Lands now. Um, but specifically, I'll be using this for... Where is it? I can't find it. Nope, I'm a little too far ahead, I think. The Babylonian and the Persian Empire maps because um, we're going to be talking about Susa and Susa. You guys can see um, both maps. Susa is here with the Persian Empire, which is obviously King Xerxes, and then the Babylonian Empire, um, it is here. So I like having these maps on hand so that I can actually like look at locations and stuff. Um, I think it's awesome. So those are the two resources that I'll be using as I read outside of my Bible, of course, to do cross-references. Um, but yeah, so it's 134 now. My son gets out at 245. I am going to spin a few minutes reading. I don't know how long I'm going to read, but I'm just going to read probably um, up to chapter three. Um, I still have two macarons left. If you guys saw my previous, uh, you're, well, you're probably not going to see that vlog anyway until after this. But I did have a cookies and cream um, macaron. I did eat it so good. Um, so I only have a vanilla one left and a honey lavender, which I will be devouring that now as I do that. And I still have my coffee, um, whatever. So we're going to start. And, um, yes, I'm going to do an in-depth video on how I do my annotating for both fiction as well as non-fiction books. Um, cause I did a video on how I annotate biblical fiction but i do want to do an updated one because i have changed the color system a little bit and added colors so we have that and um i think that's about it so we're gonna start diving into the star of persia i'll let you guys see me read and then i'll cut the camera off and come back i guess once i am we'll say five chapters and you guys know how i like to read by five chapters so um, i'm gonna try to read the chapter five before my son gets out and then come back with my thoughts so let's commence the reading <laughs> Okay guys, so I'm back. I read up to page 60, so that was six chapters, and I'm actually enjoying this a lot more than I thought I would. I'm flying through this, I'm finding, um, and it's very much a quick read. I'm liking the writing, it's very um, flawless, it's flowing. I'm enjoying the characters. Um, some of the characters, I do recognize their names from the actual scripture, um, but it's enjoyable. Each chapter is broken up in two different portions. So you have different perspectives. So like one chapter might completely be Hadassah, who was Esther. Another chapter might be completely Vashti. Or you could have a mix of like Vashti with Xerxes. Then you can flip over to Hadassah. Like I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I love the prologue and how it's set up for the introduction of Hadassah and Vashti. I love it. Um, uh, what else? Mordecai is very interesting. We enjoy Mordecai. Um, Xerxes and this seems to have more of a heart and I, I think i like that she made it where um xerxes is actually more human and has emotions and he's dealing with different struggles um there is mention of his father king darius um there is talk of his mother atasa Ato whatever her name is um there's also mention of his other concubine wife whatever um a mistress and a mistress is pissing me off i cannot stand her i want to punch her in her face just 
she's pissing me off so i feel like a mistress is going to be the rival um wife in this because i know in the back it says that another one of Xerxes' wives is vying for a position of queen so i feel like that's going to be the person that um hadassah or esther has problems with is going to be a mistress and i'm not feeling a mistress at all um so the part where vashti is called to the men's banquet to be i guess flaunted off is getting ready to come up and it's pretty much written in a way that a mistress has given that idea or that plan to her uncle memu Kane to then tell to um king xerxes so it's getting i'm, I'm enjoying this I'm thoroughly enjoying this so we'll see how i feel by the end of chapter what chapter is that 15 by the end of chapter 16 13 excuse me so by the end of chapter 13 i should have my thoughts on what i think this is possibly going to be but just from what i read i'm definitely leaning towards a four stars um because it's very fast paced i'm loving the characters i like that the chapters are broken into different character perspectives um and it's it's flowing it's not throwing me off it's not jarring um i'm loving the use of scripture in this for sure um I think it's very sweet to see the romance between Vashti and Xerxes because you never really get to see that in the scripture. Oh, when we do get introduced to Vashti in scripture, we just know that she's banished because she refused to go to the banquet to be flaunt, flaunted to the other men. But um, I'm enjoying this. I love that they're utilizing his other wives, the concubines and things like that. Um, So yeah, thoroughly enjoying it. So it's 2.16 right now. So I will come back to you guys after I read more. All right, guys, so it's currently 3.49. Um, I just finished reading the pages I needed to read, 116 pages for this Star of Persia, and it's pretty darn good. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I love the smoothness of the writing, the way that it transitions from different character POVs. Um, I'm truly enjoying it. So we're at the portion now where the edict is written, or the decree, rather, is written for um, the virgins to be... Yeah, so it says all the beautiful virgins of marriageable age are to report to the palace in Susa. So pretty much um, Mordecai is like very frantic because he has never found a betrothed for um, Hadassah. So his there was something that happened with his wife. And then after that, um, there was a sort of reveal about one of the people that was betrothed to Hadassah, which kind of pissed me off. I was a little upset about that. Like I wanted to punch the person in the face. But we're there now and i'm thoroughly enjoying it it's very fast paced i'm definitely at a four star rating right now so hopefully by this time i get through the second third i'll be at a, like a 4.5 but i'm thoroughly enjoying it i'm really enjoying xerxes point of view um and getting to see what he could have been like i think it's interesting and um jill definitely has done an amazing job i'm finding that i'm flying through this a little more easily than i did with the heart of a king so yeah i'm thoroughly enjoying it can't wait to finish up tomorrow but um those are my thoughts for today i did end up picking up another book yeah so i picked up this which is claim your crown by tara lynn uh saint ellen i think that tara lynn saint ellen i think it says her name but um this is gorgeous i am on page 51 and it's a very great book i did underline i just haven't done my color coding yet but um it's really great this is my devotional reading for the month of march um, well, one of my devotional readings for the month of March is this nonfiction book, and I'm enjoying it so much. Um, so, what I'm getting ready to do is finish this book here. Like I said, it's my secular book. Then I'm going to pick up The Pharaoh's Daughter. I want to get through at least one third of this book. So, I want to get to page 122 in this book before I solidify everything for book club. Um, with this book, we are reading five chapters a week. Because this is a hefty book, there are 70-something odd chapters in here, I think, if I'm not mistaken. No, not 70. 40-something. I don't know why I just said 70. Like, I'm bugging. 40, 42 chapters in this book. So this book is a little bit longer, and I don't want it to be super, super long. So it is broken down into five chapters a week. So I'm going to get a little bit of a head, a little bit ahead before I... Um, finish finalizing all the details for book club and then once I get through those I'll probably break this reading down into half though once I get through halfway of um, this book depending on how long the audiobook is I'm going to go back into this beauty here I'm thoroughly enjoying it like I said I'm on chapter I'm up to chapter four now um, it's really really good there are seven six chapters total in this for Aaron totally enjoying Aaron definitely gonna be a four star most likely but um yeah, that is the plan for today. So I'm going to put these aside. 
and um get into my fantasy for the day and i'll see you guys tomorrow for the next portion of this video hey guys so whew, it's march fifth i think it's the fifth um thursday uh is it let me look at this color <laughs> Yes, it's March 5th. Um, I just got back in the house. It's currently 10.50 a.m. You can see my bed. Um, can you see it? Yeah, I took everything off my bed so that I can do laundry. So I did laundry, which is right there. Um, I need to put all that laundry up. But before I even do that, I'm going to fix up my sheets and then eat. I went to the store and got me... Bacon, egg, and cheese I'm really hungry and I didn't feel like cooking anything. I also got me pineapple sun kiss. I normally get an orange or a grape, but I wanted to try something new. And I saw that they had this, which I have not seen. It says new. It's the strawberry lemonade. So I'm going to try that. Um, so while I'm eating, I'm going to listen to some of um, Star of Persia and get that going. I'm hot. It's a weird day outside, but yeah, so... Probably not going to have any reading clips until like later in the evening, but yeah, I'll come back to you guys when I get ready to read. Hey guys, so it is now finally 1-11. Um, I literally was from the last time I told you guys at like 10.30 something up until now, um, I was doing, basically putting up laundry. I finally put all the laundry up, I fixed my bed, got the sheets on, got my clothes out to sleep in, my son's pajamas, his uniform out. Um, that's pretty much what I did for those hours. Um, I think I'm gonna, like, I, I want to start reading. So what I'm gonna do right now is get to my chapter today of this. I think there's only like 12, 20-something chapters in this book, 21 chapters in this book. It's not long, though. Um, the chapters are really short, so I'm on chapter 5, which is Fairest of Them All. So I'm probably going to listen to the audiobook of this for a bit. It's about 14 pages long, chapter 5, so I'm going to knock this out again. This is the um, Claim Your Crown by Tara Lynn St. Ellen. This is pretty darn good. I'm enjoying it, loving the... Um, feel of me being able to like I, it feels like i'm sitting at a, at a table with her and discussing things i'm gonna pick up on star of persia so the goal for this today is to get to page 241 um so i'm going to most likely split this in half and get to like a halfway point so that i can read half and then pause and then read half, some of another book and then come back to it so, um, I find that I kind of enjoy reading that way. So I'm just getting a pink, a different colored, um, piece of paper to split it so that I know. So, um, gonna be reading this next. So, I'll come back to you guys when I actually sit down to get ready to actually read that book. Hey guys, so it is Friday. It is March 6th. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but, um, March 6th, Friday, 11-11. Um, so yeah. I have my last two, my last two macarons, um, my last two lavender ones, I'm so sad, I literally was like, I told my brother, we gotta go to the mall this weekend so that I can, like, get a new box, because I need a box, like, I need a box, um, but we're gonna dive into reading, so I did read yesterday, I don't know, I don't remember if I made a clip about yesterday or not, but I did read yesterday, um, I only read from 116, I think it was, yeah, I read 117 to 186, so that was chapters 14 to 20. And um, in those chapters, it was just a bunch of sadness going on. Um, pretty much, uh, I was about to say Rahab, but that's not her name. Hadassah um, was feeling a little emotional because things have just been going left field for her. Um, you know, dad has now been engaged to someone else, so she's pretty much upset. Um, she's angry that L Livia is gone. She's missing her parents. She's upset that she's, like, the source of love for Mordecai right now. So she's just basically in her feelings. Um, and then the decree gets made that, you know, all the beautiful versions must be taken to the palace and blah, 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 blah. So um, we then get to see her live in the palace. We get to see Haggai um, make her, you know, his favorite. Um, we get to see her 
in her year, I guess, of preparation. But what I don't like is that they kind of, they pretty much gloss over it. And um, when it gets to that point of it being like a year, you're just like, wait, did a year really just pass? Because I, if I'm not mistaken, there is no way. Let me just, let me just go back. Yeah, like, it just completely skips to it like she's been there for a year. So, I'm like, you know, it would have been nice if they would have put, like, a, a, a one year later type of thing at the top for me to understand. Because it literally just skips from, like, her getting to know more information about the king in the library. And then, flash forward, now we're a year into her being in the palace and now it's her, her time. And I'm just like, okay. Um, I did love her meeting Xerxes. I will say, Esther is a very intelligent young woman. Um, she really wanted to get to know who Xerxes was and not just him as a king. Um, so I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the first time that they met. They very much talked. Um, as you can see, I like did a bunch of pink on this page because I love the way that they were talking with each other. And, um, you know, on that night that she was with him, she was supposed to sleep with him. But he had a change of heart. He didn't want to just sleep with her. He really found himself falling for her and he wanted to marry her. So I really do love that Xerxes is um, respecting Esther as a woman and that he is adamant about being with her rightfully in the way that she's supposed to be with someone. Um, so I love that portion. So now they are married. She is the queen. And um, they ended basically on them doing the do. But it was like a fade out <laughs> kind of scene. So I thought that was cute. So yeah, I'm going to read chapters 22 to chapter 28. And then I'll come back with my thoughts. But um, pretty much I plan to finish this today. I was supposed to finish the whole um, second third yesterday. But I only read part of the second third. So I'm going to finish that up now. And then I'm going to complete this tonight. Um, so this is a three-day vlog, but it's not like my normal vlog. So yeah, I'm going to finish this up. I'm listening to the audiobook, which is epic. Hold on, let me just open my phone. I used to think face recognitions and fingerprints were stupid on phones. But now that my phone does all three, pen, face recognition, and the um, fingerprint, I'm loving it. <laughs> that I can just open my phone simply. Um, but I also want to do a what's on my phone because I'm loving my phone, you guys. Yes, my phone screen is a semi-live wallpaper, and I love it so much. Um, I, of course, have my icons and stuff here, but I just love this phone so much. I'm, I'm loving it, and I have a lavender theme on my phone, obviously, so everything is lavender, everything, but um, I'm quite excited to get back in. So, like I said, I'm listening to the audiobook on Scribd. Again, I will leave all the information for Scribd down below. I really do like Scribd a lot. Um, and the fact that they don't, they don't limit you per se, but I'm going to also leave a video that I saw, which is why I ended up re-signing back up for Scribd that explains the true limitations of Scribd because I do think financially it's a better deal than Audible. Um, but you also have to know exactly how it works. Um, so again, I do recommend Scribd. If you guys are interested, just use the link down below. Um, you sign up, you get two months free, and then I get an additional month free. I am using a two-month free trial right now, which is awesome. So if you guys do use my code to sign up, I then get additional months free. But, um, I'm only paying $9.99 a month with tax, so it's about 10 and some change. And, yeah, I am thoroughly enjoying it. So, yeah, we're gonna end here, and let's... Let me just jump back into reading, and I'll come back once I'm done with chapters 22 to 20... 22? Yeah, 22 to 28, and I'll come back. So it's about six cha six chapters, um, and I'll come back with my thoughts. Okay, guys. So I read chapters 22 to 28, and it was interesting. Um, Pretty much, I'm not really highlighting anything purple in here, and you guys know purple is for anything scripture-related, because this is literally, like, the entire book of Esther, so there's no point in me marking this up with purple, because there will be too many purple tabs and markings. But, um, 22 to 28, pretty much, you have Xerxes. He goes to Persepolis, and he takes, um, Esther with him. Amestris is pissing me off. I can't stand her. She needs to burn in a volcano. Um, yeah, she needs to be up there with Caiaphas for me right now. Because she's just so evil. Um, a, a, a Tosa, a Tasa, don't really know how to pronounce her name, but, um, Xerxes' mother, that was such a, there was a sad scene that took place with her, so. I kind of almost shed a tear for her, but I didn't because she's just as evil as Amestris is. 
But um, we're finally getting into the portions with Haman. And we're at the part where Mordecai has said he wasn't going to bow down to Haman. And finding out that Haman is part Agai. And, you know, the issues between the Jews and the Agites and King Saul and all this extra stuff. We already know the story. If, again, if you have not studied the book of Esther, just click the eye on the screen to go to that video series that I did in which we studied the book of Esther. But, um, yeah, this is definitely sitting at a 4.5 for me. I'm loving the romance between Xerxes and um, Esther. They're very, very much just... I don't even know how to describe the romance between them. It's, it's so adorable and cute. But... There is something about Xerxes, he has just, like, major fear, um, of, like, pleasing his dead father. I don't, I don't get it. Um, he needs to get over it. He's putting too much trust in, in Haman. Um, the scene where Mordecai told Esther about the two guards, we got through that portion as well. It was T Teresh and something, Big, Big Thin, Big Thin. The two people from the actual scripture, their names are in the scripture. Again, um, there's not going to be a lot of purple tabs in this book just because this entire book is on the book of Esther. The book of Esther is 10 chapters. I refuse to go through this entire book and mark it up in purple. I'm just, I'm not going to do it. But, um... I'm definitely enjoying it. So I pretty much have this last third to read. So I already split up my sections. Um, the first portion will be 29 to chapter... What chapter is this? Um, 37. Um, but I'm going to take a minute and just pause. But definitely sitting at a 4.5. I really, like I said, I hope this is a 5-star read for me. I hope this can be my new Esther novel that I like recommend to people. Because I'm truly, truly enjoying Esther as a character... Um, she has a backbone, she's very headstrong, but she's very respectable. Um, you can see her battling between her love for Mordecai as her uncle slash father, as well as her love for her husband, who was also the king. So, um, yeah. But Amestris, she got the go, okay? Amestris and Haman, <laughs> we already know how I feel about Haman. If, like I said, if you didn't study the Book of Esther with us, then you probably won't know, but I just, I have a total dislike for Haman. I dislike him, and Amestris is right up there. She is just evil. She's twisted. Um, there is mention of her two sons, Darius, who's named after Xerxes' father, and then Xerxes' second son, or third son, or I think he's a third son. I don't know. Xerxes has too many goddamn kids for me. But, um, Ar Arach... Mm, yep, the name on the screen. You guys will see it, because I can't say it. But, um, he's Xerxes number two. Um, pretty much, if you guys have read Harvest of Rubies and Harvest of Gold by Tessa Afshar, then the king from that book is this dude's son. Hopefully that makes sense. But, um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's actually pretty, pretty darn good. Um, and I'm excited to finish it and come back with, like, my full thoughts. So, um, when I do start picking up this book again to read chapters 29 to 37, I will probably have a sort of montage of me reading. I haven't really been including a lot of those. Um, I still have my last two macaroons here i'm so sad um but yeah i love this i just i love this cover so expect a tutorial on this for sure definitely gonna be playing with some purples and golds for this look love 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 it and i'm just obsessed with this back but um yeah i still need to catch up on reading sons of encouragement so i do want to try and finish um reading the priest Aaron which is book one of the five books in here so I definitely want to finish that tonight and I want to get started on this I still have yet to start yeah I still didn't start um the Pharaoh's daughter but I'm hoping that I can knock that out soon um you know maybe I can get through the first portion today who knows but once I start this I'll have more information as far as book club goes but that is it. I'm about to chill out for a minute. Reheat my dang tea. You guys know what tea this is. If not, you're new to my channel. I'll explain. I love the Bigelow Pumpkin Spice Tea. It is the best black tea on earth right now for me. As well as um, the Cold Stone Creamer from International Delights. And their Pumpkin Spice Creamer is so delicious. So delicious. Um, but it got cold. And it don't taste good cold. So I gotta heat it up. Nice. But... Uh huh yeah and if you guys hear that in the background that is my son's father <laughs> he is here so yeah but um you guys know how these vlogs go these vlogs are not like my actual videos so yeah but i'm gonna go and come back when i get ready to read again
Okay, guys, so I'm back. I am on page 307. Uh, I'm, I've am i got chapter 38 to 43, 42 plus the epilogue. So here's my dilemma. I'm thoroughly enjoying the book, like thoroughly enjoying it. It's keeping me engaged. It's very fast paced. It's quick to fly through. But what I find with a lot of biblical fiction authors is that once you get to the last third of the book, it's like they cram a bunch of scripture and everything is fast paced. I kind of felt this way with um, The End of the Magi by Patrick W. Carr. That book was so great for two thirds. And then that last third, it was just like scripture loaded and it went by too fast. But here's the other thing. The book of Esther is really like that in which it's fast paced. So I don't know if it's just me being critical as a reader or if I should just let it go because that's also how the scriptures are with it being so fast paced. I don't know. I'm having a slight dilemma. But we're basically to the port in the Bible where um, Haman has decided he's going to cast a lot. He decided on the, the 14th of Adar. I, yeah, I know I don't know the actual times and dates of these times. But yeah, he basically selected the time in which he was going to basically do a mass genocide on the Jews. Mordecai is crying boohoo in his little garb. Um, I'm saying garb, excuse me, in his um, clothing with the ash. And then he tells Esther and Esther decides to go to the king. And then she fasts for three days and blah, blah, blah. You guys know I'm not saying blah, blah, blah to be like rude or anything. But we all know the story of Esther. So we got to the part where she, you know, got herself done up. She went into the king's inner court. And of course, the king being the king and loving Esther, he allowed her to come through. Um, And then they had the first feast and or banquet rather. I think it's a banquet is what she called it. But she had the first banquet with Haman and um the king. And now we're moving on to the second part. But... The scene where uh, the king couldn't sleep and he woke up and he went to the people. I don't even know what they call them. It's not the treasury. But the people that keep the book with all the things that go on. You guys know what I'm talking about, okay? It's like in chapter 8 or chapter 7 of something like that in the Bible. The book of Esther, you guys know. But that scene, um, and then he found out that he never really rewarded Mordecai. So then he finds Haman and Haman has to put him on the horse with the garbs and all that but Haman is already plotting to kill Mordecai and all the Jews we're at that part right now which is really interesting to read about because Haman is just annoying me um we know again I said this previously I hate Haman um him and Amestris can both die they can go into a pit and a volcano and just just burn okay they can burn I said this earlier with Caiaphas I have feelings okay feelings but I'm enjoying it. I just, I don't know if this is going to be 5 or 4.5 or 4.75 because it's reading quickly, but the book of Esther is only 10 chapters and everything does happen really quickly. But I also feel like because as an author, she spent time adding additional things, she could have made it a little bit longer. But I mean, this book is how many pages already? Um, This book is already 300 and uh, where is that? 54 pages so it's just like should this have been a 400 page book is it a i'm having a dilemma am i loving it yes this is definitely my new favorite over esther by um angela hunt i'm loving this a lot more i feel connected to esther as a character i'm loving the growth but the pacing is killing me right now um i have one third left to go um i'm excited to read it's like 50 something pages yeah because i'm on page 308 i have about 40 something odd pages 50 odd pages um uh, yeah 54 no i'm retarded i don't know <laughs> um I, I have a few pages to go okay so it's good i'm loving it but that pacing i don't i don't quite know so i'm struggling and there's a door so i'm gonna go and come back to you guys when i finish reading this book hey ladies so i'm back to do the final portion of this reading vlog it is 301 um, we just picked up our son and they both left. So I'm going to take this time to finish this book. I'm going to read the last few chapters off camera. And when I get to chapter 42, I will come. Ooh. Yeah, when I get to chapter 42, I'll come back on camera and do like a reading montage. And then, you know, discuss my final thoughts, of course. But let's get into this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book.
Okay, guys. So, my final rating is a five star for this book. Um, it was fast paced. It was epic. The romance between Xerxes and um, Esther was phenomenal. I love that she used the entirety of the Book of Esther to create this story. Um, she made Esther such a headstrong young woman, and I loved it. Mordecai even was amazing. Um, King Xerxes, or King Ahasuerus, as he's called in the Bible, was amazing. My gripe about the pacing, it is a gripe. I wish it wasn't as quick, but when I take into consideration and think about how chapter 10 of the Book of Esther is legit like three verses or something like that, let me grab one of my thousands of Bibles that's sitting next to me. So, I'm grabbing my King James Bible. And I'm like literally going to look up Esther right now. I just skipped over it, didn't I? Yeah, I just passed Esther. Where is she? Where is she? Come through, Esther. Alright, alright, here we go. So, chapter 10 of Esther is legit. I think it's three verses or is it two verses? Yeah, like, it's legit <laughs> three verses. Um, so, I really can't complain too much about the pacing since she specifically took it from scripture. Um, this was a solid, solid five-star read. I loved it through and through. I loved all the characters, including Amestris. As much as I disliked Amestris and um, Mem Memukain, Memukan, I think that's how you say his name, as well as Haman, as much as I disliked them, I think their characters were essential in the way that she crafted them was amazing. Amestris, I'm pretty sure she probably was one of the wives of Xerxes. I don't know for sure. But um, I like how she included a third party as sort of a problem for Esther outside of just using Haman and um things like that so i thought that was brilliant this was just amazing and i'm excited for anything else that she writes again i do have some of her other ebooks on my nook that i'm going to give a go actually let me tell you guys which ones that i have because i have them on my nook um right now so let's type in her name jill eileen so i have abigail i have bathsheba McCall, I have the prophetess, um, Sarai, Redeeming Grace, which is the story of Ruth, Rebecca, Rachel, um, and then I have the prophetess about Deborah. I do have four other books from her, Daughter of the Nile, the Desert Princess, the Queen of Sheba, and um, the Shepherdess, but those four are in her actual The Heart of a King. So those were novellas that she just wrote into The Heart of a King as one book. So I read those already. So... Um, I find that I, I love this a lot more. Um, it flowed. It was easy to get into. The pacing. Um, it was it was pretty fast paced. But that last, like I said, one third was a little too fast for my liking. But it makes sense if you have actually read and studied the book of Esther. It is pretty, you know, pretty fast paced and things like that. Um, I do love the mention of God in this. We all know that in the actual book of Esther there is no mention of God. But she did not shy away from using God's name in here. Even though it wasn't as um, frequent of a usage, but it makes sense considering it's the book of Esther. Um, I, I adored this book, so I'm definitely going to give it a solid five stars. Um, I wish that there was a little bit more to this book, like maybe 400 pages, just just me as a reader. You know, add a little 50, 50 more pages to this, it would have been like on point, like solid. But um, this was perfection. I love this, and I'm just excited to see where my month goes with biblical fiction reading um for the month of march i'm really sticking to a lot more biblical fiction reading books um i have like my books for my secular um reviews and things like that but i'm really sticking into reading a lot more biblical fiction for this month um i don't know i just have a feel uh, like a desire to read a lot more biblical fiction this month but um this this did the job for me so i'm excited for anything else do i recommend this book thoroughly recommended i think it is a phenomenal book um that retells the story of esther in such a phenomenal way and um like i said there's a lot of scripture in here i mean it's practically the entire book of esther thrown in here but i like the way she dispersed everything and the way she wrote the characters and just it was phenomenal it was beautiful and i loved it and i wish she was a book too but we know there's no book too so i'm interested to see what she'll be writing next i don't know what's at the end of this let's see so there is a note to the reader in the back, as well as acknowledgments. 
Um, and then she talks about her other books, so. And here's the Heart of a King, if you guys don't know what that looks like. So I'm excited to put this on my shelf. I definitely want to read this series. I don't even know what this series is called. But, um, this one here. I'm excited to read that. I have all of them. I have two of those. I have The Prophetess and Redeeming Grace. Um, I have all of her Wives of the Patriarchs, I think it is. No, it's the Wives of King David. <laughs> so I have the Wives of King David series. I have a few of her other novels. So. And then I have her um, Wives of Patriarch as well. So I'm super, super excited to dive into more of her writing. I think it's phenomenal. I think you should read it. I loved it so much. It was amazing. It was everything. And um, yes, yeah, so I did finish this reading vlog for you guys, thankfully. Um, and I enjoyed this so much. Like, I'm, I'm excited. I'm super stoked to dive into more books. So right now I'm going to take some time and read a new book. I'm not going to do a reading vlog for that book, though, because we already know that I'm recording another reading vlog, which I, I haven't picked up that book yet in a while, um, in the past day or two. So, yeah, but I love this. And I did separate it. Um, if you guys can see, I separated the different sections. There are four parts to this part one, part two, part three, part four. And then you have the epilogue and the prologue, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. So, um, solid five star read. Loved it so much. I think she did a phenomenal job with the character development um, and the uses of scripture. You guys know how I feel about biblical fictions. Um, if you're going to do a biblical fiction or a Christian nonfiction book that is um, sort of like a self health, self development, growth type of book, I highly like, I, I desire tons of scripture and saturated in the book of Esther. So, <laughs> we're happy. Um, and I, I really loved her imagining of the romance between Esther and, um, King Ahasuerus, aka Xerxes. But, um, yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you have not purchased this book, I suggest you do. I will leave a link down below to Amazon for you to purchase this, whether you want a paperback, hardback, audiobook, ebook, all down below. Um, and expect a makeup tutorial for this look, for this book cover coming soon. But um, yeah, that's it, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.